The 1991 comedy, romance movie Career Opportunities features Jim Dodge, a young adult with career struggle who sees no reason to be independent, and Josie McClellan, who hails from a wealthy background but hopes to flee from her overbearing father for independence, whose paths intertwine as they're locked in massive store together. The movie's first scene shows Jim talking to dogs in an animal shop, while reading a newspaper article about two notorious criminals. Not quite long, his boss arrives and trips him to the floor, after which he fires him from the job. Jim however doesn't see his incompetent self. He tells his boss the animals liked him, the dogs bark their disagreement. Jim bluffs to a few kids on the way about selling off the animal shop he'd just bought. He'd just been hired before the incident and he lied about owing the place. Shortly afterward, he arrives at a gas station. He engages in a conversation with its owner. The man politely declines Jim's request when he asks to work without getting paid. Just then Josie arrives in her car. Upon seeing her, Jim immediately pulls a stunt to get her attention. However, his display is short-lived as his dad. Mr. Bud Dodge grabs him by the collar. He scolds him for losing his job yet again. Jim, however, tells his dad that he'd resigned, trying to talk big since Josie was watching. Unfortunately for him, his dad doesn't buy his lies and drags him to the cement truck. Jim's dad is a cement contractor. Later that night, Jim's put in an awkward situation during dinner, as his dad asks him to pay rent while staying at home. His dad wants him to get a job and be independent however Jim doesn't see things from his dad's perspective. The next morning, Jim's dad takes him to the Target store to get a job. Jim accuses his dad of wanting to get rid of him, when he talks about sending him to learn gardening if he doesn't get the job. His dad however tells him that he wants him out of his house but not his life, after which he pushes him out of the truck. Jim stands in front of the massive building watching people rush in and out with items. He arrives at the store manager's office, he declines to have coffee when the store manager asks. The store manager takes Jim as the new operating manager by mistake. When Jim hears the offer he'll be given, he immediately coordinates himself. He manages to convince the store manager to pay him more with his captivating act. However, his moment is short-lived when the store manager receives a call about the recruit. He then tells Jim his offer since his dad had applied for the overnight janitor job for him. Jim's disappointed but takes the job anyway. Up next, Mr. Roger Roy McClellan, Josie's father, is in a meeting with his two friends about work when Josie arrives. She tries to sneak past them, but he calls her in, asking her to say hello to his friends. Josie, however, takes off her coat and walks majestically towards Mr. X and kisses him. She crashes Dave's hope, who's expecting a kiss as well, with a handshake. His dad is left embarrassed, after which he gives her a scolding later in the night regarding the stunt she pulled. Meanwhile, two thieves interrupt a couple making out in their car and steal it. Next, Jim's parents are stunned as a limousine arrives to pick Jim up for work. Jim bluffs as he enters the limousine. On his way, he slows down upon seeing his three friends. He gives them a show about him going for a meeting with the presidents, while the kids stare at him in awe as he rides off. Meanwhile, Josie's in the Target store, shoplifting. Shortly afterward, he arrives at the massive supermarket where he begins daydreaming. He walks into the place majestically as he orders a worker Bobby around, leaving Bobby confused about him. Josie continues hiding away items when the store announces closing for the day. Later at night, the custodian addresses Jim on his work. He instructs him to clean up the place overnight, warning him not to eat or use anything that he doesn't pay for in the place. Jim gets too comfortable with him, thinking they were co-workers until he reprimands him. The custodian asks him to turn on the light for only a few minutes to clean, after which he leaves, locking Jim inside. Jim freaks out as he walks away after locking him in the massive building alone. Shortly afterward, Jim begins cleaning the place. However, he makes a mess of the whole place instead. He makes use of the items in the shop to aid his work, which he still doesn't get right. After slagging around for a while, claiming to work, he takes a break to eat snacks and use his items, without paying. He dives into his world and uses a microphone to perform, after which he feasts on more snacks. Shortly afterward, he calls his parents, not realizing how late it was. His dad worries over him as he ponders over his decision to force him to work. After dropping his call, Jim continues to party in his world as he skates around with his underpants, making a huge mess in the store. He crashes into a stack of items when he notices Josie who stares at him in amusement. He's shocked to see her in the store. He tells her about his job when she questions him. Meanwhile, Josie's dad gets help from a cop to search for his missing daughter. When Josie tells Jim that she was locked in when she fell asleep while shoplifting, Jim is even more surprised. Josie's father was one of the wealthiest men in town, so he doesn't buy her story. Josie then jokes over the situation, telling him it wasn't her but her lookalike who shoplifted. On the other hand, Jim's dad is unable to sleep and he gets some chicken to eat from the fridge. Up next, Jim gets company from Josie as he makes chicken and sauce in the store, using items as though he owns the place. Josie follows him around in amusement. Jim doesn't give Josie a moment as he keeps talking non-stop. Josie then suggests he goes into sales with his communication skills. After they are done eating, he takes out a cigarette for a smoke, bluffing, 
leading to Josie calling him the town liar. Jim gets taken aback upon hearing her. He had no idea he'd been tagged the town liar, as though he'd never lied. Josie apologizes for the awkward compliment. Jim, however, pretends to be fine, telling her not to worry since people always form assumptions. He then asks about her perception of him. However, Josie didn't know him personally although they'd attended the same high school. The duo then go ahead to talk about their different experiences in high school. Jim cuts in every time Josie has something to say. However, she talks about how she couldn't even shoplift to embarrass her dad, so she could leave home. Jim gets irritated and leaves, pondering over the town liar tag, to continue his work after Josie accuses him of being too dependent. Shortly afterward, Josie dances to record as she checks out a few more. Jim peeps at her, after which he dances behind her. She, however, pauses the song when she notices him. Later on, Josie puts a message through to Jim, speaks in the control room. She tells him she wasn't interested in guys lying to impress her. Jim begins giving defensive replies as he listens to her. She goes ahead to talk about how he's running away from having a free life and making out with a girlfriend. Jim yells, saying he could do whatever he wanted when he's ready. Upon hearing him, Josie joins him while he rolls his cart. In the next scene, the duo sits another conversation as they ponder on their different circumstances. Jim has the freedom Josie wants, however, he doesn't see reasons to leave home. On the other hand, Josie had the wealthy life he wishes for. However, she doesn't care much about it. Jim then asks her why she's unable to leave. She, however, tells him that they both share the same reason for not wanting to leave, not being left alone. Meanwhile, Jim's dad gets busy tearing off and stuffing food into his mouth. On the other hand, Josie's dad is still searching for her. He gets the cop asking if he fought with his daughter. Josie asks Jim to leave home with her, but he immediately refuses, telling her he wasn't built to be so free. She then tells him about her sad story accompanying her so-called perfect life. Jim, however, agrees to go with her, leaving her surprised. She then tells him they'd be needing a car to flee, and she informs him about the cash in her purse. Jim was surprised at the amount of money she had on her. Meanwhile, a car drives towards the Target store. Josie makes a deal with Jim to pay him for the time she'd been mean to him in high school. However, he talks about and dances he didn't get to finish with her, but Josie wasn't expecting that. After which, Josie dances with him, leading to kisses. Meanwhile, Josie's dad arrives outside the Target store, and Jim and Josie's romance is cut short when the cop knocks on the door. Jim is surprised to see Officer Don. He was afraid the custodian had come to check up on him. He's, however, unable to let him in since he'd been locked in. Officer Don is also surprised to see Jim in the Target store when he tells him about his new job. Officer Don asks Jim if he'd seen Josie and he denies seeing her. Meanwhile, the two thieves who'd stolen a car peep while the inspector speaks with Jim. Officer Don leaves after making a joke about Josie being with someone her dad didn't approve of. Up next, Josie and Jim have fun skating around the store. However, their moment is cut short as they skate into the two thieves pointing guns at them, crashing them down. The fall leaves the thieves on the ground giving Jim and Josie time to escape after turning off the lights. The duo hide in a dressing cubicle, with Josie on top of him. One of the thieves works into their hideout but doesn't find them. Unfortunately for Jim, he steps on hand while searching, and Josie helps him shut his mouth as he bears the pain. However, the thief still manages to catch them. Shortly afterward, the thieves get Jim and Josie lying on the floor. One of them asks Josie if she had a tattoo. Jim tries to lure them over to where he and Josie were lying. As they get closer one of them uses his shoes to touch Josie's obvious thing as Jim talks. Jim lures them into believing that he owned a drug business and that Josie was his hostage. He tells them that in a few minutes the cops will arrive. The duo gets engrossed in Jim's big talk when he outsmarts them. Jim collects both their guns as they freak out from the fake police announcement. Jim also gets outsmarted when they lie to him that the guns had no bullets. This time walk behind Jim and Josie with their guns. The situation gets Jim talking to Josie as though it was his last moment. Josie however tells him to follow along with her plan. She plans during them the out to stake their car. They get to a cafeteria, where they, including Jim, eat snacks while watching Josie rock on a horse. She manages to lure one of them into riding with her. She makes a deal with them, telling them they could take anything they wanted on the condition that she joins them. The thieves see a one-time opportunity to get all they desire, after which they loot items from the store. On their way out with a full cart, Jim acts up refusing to let them leave with the items. He's even more shocked to see Josie rolling out with the cart as well. He confronts her, but one of them charges at him. He then allows them to leave when Josie begs him not to be difficult. While they stuff their trunk with the humongous stolen items, Josie takes the chance to get into the car. She immediately takes off as they shout at her. Meanwhile, Jim grabs a rifle from the custodian's office. As the thieves return to exact their revenge on Jim, he lures them to a counter, 
following the sound of his voice. Jim however gives them a shock as he blasts the bullets at them. Meanwhile, Jim and Josie's dad are both in the restaurant, having a hard time resting. As the sun rises, Josie arrives, smiling at Jim on their victory. Shortly afterward Inspector B arrives and is surprised to see the notorious thieves bound with chains. Jim and Josie take a ride in a limousine, and Jim stops to show off upon seeing the three kids. Josie also steps out, leaving the kids dumbstruck at Jim. After which, he rides off to a fun life in Hollywood with his girl and the movie ends.